Twitter is a great source of information. In today's episode of Vernos, I'm going to be showing you how you can use Python to scrape data from Twitter. With Twitter's recent changes and restricting the use of its API, this will be a super useful method to allow you to extract near real-time data from Twitter. So let's dive right in. In order to scrape our data, we're going to be using the Scraper API. And in order to use this API, you first have to create an account. So you can go ahead and go to scraperapi.com and then you can click the try free button and then it will take you to where you can create an account. You'll have to use a valid email address and create a password and then also agree to the terms and conditions, check the captcha, and then they'll send you an auth authentication link to your email that you can go there and authenticate and then it will give you an API key that we'll be needing in order to actually write our code. And once you finish with that, you can go ahead and open the Jupyter Notebook and now we can start coding. In order to do this, we need to import two libraries. The first one is requests, which is what we'll be using to make our HTTP requests to actually go out to the web and scrape data. And then we'll also import pandas and we'll use the standard PD alias for that. And we'll be using this because once we scrape our data and get that data back, we'll be using data frames so that we can look at our data and then have access to all of the processing functions that you can use with pandas. So once you have that typed out, you can go ahead and run that to import your libraries. Once we have those imported, the next thing we'll do is we'll create a list and we'll just have this be a blank list. And then we'll append our data into this as we get that data. So we can go ahead and create our blank list. And then we're going to create this and we'll call this payload. And this payload is a set that will contain the parameters that will dictate how our search works. So the first thing we'll pass in is the API key. Make sure it's API underscore key. And then you'll go into the Scraper API, get your API key and paste it in there. I'm not going to show my API key on screen, but I will go in and paste it in before I run the code, even though you won't actually see my key. And then you'll pass in the query. Now what this query is, it is your search query. So what do you actually want to scrape from Twitter? And so here, let's say we want to get more information about artificial intelligence. So we'll go ahead and put artificial intelligence inside of our search parameters. And we actually have a lot of videos on ChatGPT and the impact of artificial intelligence are on our channel. So if you're more interested in this topic, go ahead and watch those. And then we're going to pass in num, which is the number of responses or the number of tweets we want to scrape. So in this case, we'll go ahead and do 25. And that's all we need for our payload, which is sort of just our search parameters. And now we're actually going to get back a response. And so we're going to create that response now. And this will be set to request. And we're going to make a get request. And here we're going to pass in a link to the Scraper API. So that would be HTTPS colon slash slash API dot Scraper API dot com slash structured make sure you spell everything properly slash twitter slash search and we need to also tell this get request what our parameters for our search are so there's this params which is short for parameters keyword and we'll set that equal to payload and i'm just double checking my syntax there making sure everything looks good and it does so then from there once we get our data, that will be the response that we get back. So this response here, our get response, will come back with some data. And we want that in JSON format. And then we'll set that to a variable called data. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in my API key and then run this off screen. So I'm going to do that now. So now that we have our data, let's go ahead and take a peek at it. And you can see, let's actually look at the type of this, even though I'm pretty sure you can tell from this output. We're going to do type of data, and you can see we have a dictionary. And when we look inside of this, it's actually kind of hard to interpret just from looking at that. So let's see what keys we have. You can see we have three keys, search information, organic results, and pagination. So let's look at each of these separately. Let's put in search information. You can see that just tells you the total results and the time uh, that it took to get those. And let's see what were the other two keys. Organic results was one. So let's look at that. 
you can see here this is actually the title and the snippet from the tweet and it gives you the link and the display link so this is a lot of very useful information then if we look at page and nation that's just giving you some additional metadata about your data pool all right so the important one that we all really care about here right now is organic results And then if we look at the type that was returned, we can see this is a list. So we can actually access certain elements of organic results. You can see each element within that list is once again a dictionary. And we can use our keys from that in order to access more data about it. So we can see now we have the position, title, snippet, highlights, link, and display link for our data. So let's go ahead and get the title for our first tweet. And that's artificial intelligence, terms marketers need to know. And let's see what else we can get. Let's look at our snippet. Yeah, you can see this is actually part of the tweet. It does get truncated uh, towards the end of the tweet. But this is a lot of good information that we have inside of here. So now what we need to do is we actually need to iterate through our the data that we receive and put it in a data frame so that we can have it in a nicer format. So we'll create a variable, call it all tweets, and we'll set that equal to data. And for now, we'll only care about the organic results. And we'll iterate over that data frame for tweet and all tweets. We have that blank list from earlier. We'll do Twitter data dot append, and we'll put the tweet into it. And then we can run that. And then we're going to create a data frame. We'll just call that DF. And we'll turn our Twitter data into a data frame. And I'll also export this as JSON. So we can do df that to JSON, which is a pandas method. We'll just call this tweets.json. And for orient, we'll set that equal to index. And then we'll just print file export it. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. You can see that ran successfully. And now let's look at our data frame. You can see we have the position, title, snippet, highlights, link, display, link, and tags for all of the data that we were able to pull from Twitter. And so now if you had, let's say, a machine learning algorithm or you wanted to analyze some text from Twitter, this is how you would get that data. If you want more videos on how to analyze or pull different types of data from Twitter, then go ahead and like this video and leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see in the future video. I will be open to taking your suggestions on what you want to see next in the video or if there is more about Twitter scraping you want to know, then go ahead and let me know in the comment. And also, before I go, I just want you to know that you don't have to export this as JSON. You can export this data as a CSV or any other popular format. Uh, there's a list of pandas exporting data functions that you can look up. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. We have a lot of Python videos on our channel, and we also have two videos on scraping Instagram data. So if you're interested in that, I'll link that in the description below. And you should also go check those out because there's a lot of good content in those. We also have a lot of iOS app development videos coming in the future. So if you're interested in that, then make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss those uploads. And already on our channel, we have a whole lot of Python videos. We have topics about artificial intelligence, and we talk about machine learning and the impact that can have on society in the future and we also have some raspberry pi pico videos so if you're interested in microcontrollers then go ahead and check that out and we'll have more amazon web services content coming in the future so if you're interested in any of those topics make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell and leave a comment and a like letting us know you like this video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video